simple logistic regression makes use of a single predictor variable and a single outcome variable. So just like simple linear regression, you've got one independent or predictor variable and one dependent or outcome variable. But your outcome variable in this case has just two possible values, yes or no, success or failure, high or low, whatever it is, you've got two possible outcomes. Uh, we're also assuming all of our data points are independent. So all of these came from different people. So to do logistic regression, you're starting with this predictor variable and binary outcome variable. You get your software like SPSS and you get this kind of equation. So this is where they typically put Y, right? So your Y is really this log odds. And this is the coefficient you care about, but it's in these weird log odds units. So this beta isn't directly helpful in the same way that betas for linear regression are directly interpretable. So what you'll often see in a paper is they'll talk, they'll put these betas in the results table, but talk in terms of odds ratio in the text. And what they're doing is converting these betas from log odds to a regular odds ratio. And all they're doing is just taking the exponentiation of, of beta. So that's this key on your, your calculator, right? So they collect their data, they do logistic regression, they get their beta that falls out of it, then they calculate e to that beta, that's their odds ratio. That's really what you want. That's what's easier to interpret from a clinical perspective. So what is this odds ratio? So when they report the odds ratio, what they're typically telling you, unless they say otherwise, is it's the odds of a desired outcome over the, if the variable increases by one, over the odds of a desired outcome if the variable stays the same. So if you're measuring prison recidivism and what your predictor variable is is number of years in prison so if somebody you're wondering is somebody who has been in prison longer more likely to return to prison or not uh, what what you want to know really is if i give if somebody st spends one more year in prison, does that give them greater or less odds than somebody who spent that one year less in prison? So if I just increase that predictor variable by one, what does that do to my odds of a desired outcome or undesired outcome? And if the odds ratio is greater than one, that means that increasing your predictor variable increases the odds of this desired outcome. And most of the time in the OT literature, that's what you wanna see. That what they're looking for is increasing my predictor increases my odds of success. So when you're reading a paper with logistic regression, what you're looking for is this large odds ratio. So a large e to the beta one and you're looking for statistical significance, which tells you the probability that this could actually be zero. So here's an example. Um, so let's say an OT uses logistic regression to, to look at educational outcomes. So they look at the predictor variable is 
functional ability measured on a one to four scale and the outcome is whether a student decides to enroll in college. So that's a yes or no. And so this x variable here, that's the functional ability. So that's going to be one, two, three, or four. And the outcome, that's did they go to college? And they do the study and they come up with a beta one of 1.22 and a p-value less than 0.05. So we're reasonably sure this is, we're 95% we're sure this is not zero. So in order to actually calculate the odds ratio, they raise e to the 1.22, that's this 3.41 is your odds ratio. And what that's telling you is that for every one point increase in functional ability, somebody is 3.4 times more likely to go to college. Now, if they report confidence intervals for the odds ratios, what you want to see is that the odds ratio does not contain one. So if you remember, if the odds ratio is one, that means there's no effect. So if one is inside the confidence interval, we can't rule out the possibility that there really is no effect. So here's another example. So let's say an OT uses logistic regression to examine community participation. So does somebody get involved in community activities or not? And they're using a general health measure that's measured on a one to four scale. And they collect the data. Here's the results they get. So their beta is 0 0.97. They do the exponentiation. So their confidence interval is, so their, their odds ratio is 2.64. And when they calculate the confidence interval on this odds ratio, it stretches from 0 0.9 to 7.2. And since one is inside that confidence interval, they can't rule out the possibility that there really is no impact of general health on a student's participation with 95% certainty.